Hello and good evening and welcome to another program on law and order. In this program, we discuss different types of law. And as you know, uh, law is divided into so many different areas. Today, we are going to touch upon a type of law which is hardly spoken about or and we in this program have not dealt with it before. The area of law is called public law. And to discuss this, none other than a specialist in this area I invite, and that is Rajiv Amrasurya, attorney at law, and he's my guest today to discuss about public law and other areas of law that is related to Rajiv, welcome back to the thank, show. Thank you, Chanak. How are you it's doing? Nice to be back on this show. <laughs> uh, public law, wide area, and I think very few people in the public knows about this. Give me an explanation or definition of what exactly is public law. Well, as you rightly said, it's a very vast area. Yeah. Um, it is actually, Janakya, the, the, the law which governs the relationships between mm. the, the private citizen, the private, private individual, mm. and the government. Mm. And also the law which basically governs the, the structure and form of government. Mm. Now, um, public law can be divided into three uh, fairly large areas. Uh, that is constitutional law, uh, as, as, as you know, mm. that, that is the law which deal be, deals with the legislature, yeah. the judiciary, uh, and the executive, and, and the interrelation between those three organs of government. Mm. Then criminal law, I mean, I don't need to explain what criminal mm. law is, we all know what criminal law is. And also the third, third area, administrative law, which I'm actually more involved with. Mm. Uh, administrative law deals with, again, the, the relationships between the citizen and agencies, the executive branch of government. Mm. Uh, to, to, to simply put it, that would mean now, uh, even on a day-to-day -day basis, we as citizens, we have relationships with our, we have with our local authority, they have to collect garbage, I mean, we have, even, even from corporate level, you know, you have licensing. So all those are areas which come within the purview of administrative law. Mm. And, and writ applications, which we'll be looking at, I mm -hmm. think, later on, mm -hmm. uh, comes within the sphere of administrative mm -hmm. law. So that, 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 so that is how public law uh, uh, is basically, these areas come within the realm of public law. Uh -huh. So now, uh, does public law has a, has a part in all of the areas of law? Is, is it like, a, like uh, connected in some way or the other, isn't it? Uh, to some extent, yes, because, mm. because I mean, all these, I mean, ultimately, it's the, the same fundamental principles we drive all re a areas of law. Correct. These are now over, over years, these is little uh, sub, sub areas have, 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 have formed. formed. Uh, but I, I, I would say, yes, it, there are interrelationships between, between other areas as well. Right. Now, the uh, public law in this country. Uh, where this is, uh, where did this uh, emanate from? We, uh, is it a mixture of the Roman Dutch law and the British law? It, it, it's it mostly uh, from English law, English I, law, I would say, because now uh, the re we, we, uh, public law has, uh, apart from the three areas I spoke about, also within the administrative sphere, we have the fundamentalized jurisdiction. Mm. We have we have discussed this at a, yes, on a, on a yeah. previous program. Um, now the writ law emanates mostly from or derives mm. its, its, its source from English law. Mm. Um, it was actually uh, the, uh, uh, we had, you had something called prerogative remedies in mm. England. Mm. That was where, that this, is, this is before the 16th century, where, mm. where there were state bodies which were exercising power and the, 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 the monarch, when he, whenever he or she, he, she wished, sought intervention of court through prerogative remedies to ensure that those public bodies, public authorities, public officials worked within the framework. Right. Now, the, the, the various the, the parameters of their authority. Yes. So th then that can be said that's the intention of public law. So, can so we say that? Th th certainly. Yeah. Yeah. The intention of public law is now it's a vast area of mm. government. The, so, so within the government, there is there are there are various powers mm. which emanate actually a lot of the power emanates through the constitution, yeah, okay. and that is delegated to various branches. Mm -hmm. So each from, from from the top to the right to the smallest officer, mm. they would have their their parameter of power mm. or, or authority. Mm. So, so if one steps outside that, mm. from, from from a very basic standpoint, very basic standpoint then yeah. that that would be what we call ultra virus. Ultra -virus. 
of course, that, that is in, in, in a very simple form. Simple form. For public law is much wider in uh, scope and ambit. Right. Now, uh, if I, before we go to other areas, now, if I, if I may to uh, look at this public law, is it the same, the principles, in all countries that have a democratic governing system? Uh, uh, it is not identical in the form of uh, the implementation, implementation. But, but I would say that the fundamentals are very similar. Mm. They come, they arise from the various the, the, the human rights, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm. So those are the various sources from which the rights emanate. Mm. And also from a, from a uh, public law standpoint, administrative law standpoint, mm. um, basically all these governments have to function in the same way. Mm. But, but we, especially in the writ law, mm. we, we rely heavily on English law principles. Mm -hmm. But of course, having said that, in the last, I would say, 20 to 30 years, mm. the law has developed on its own, even in Sri Lanka. Mm. And we also now rely on Indian Indian uh, judgments, uh, especially in the area of public interest litigation. Mm. I think under Justice Bhagavati, who, who passed away recently, mm. he uh, expanded that scope. Mm. And we have now, so we have derived, uh, say for example, uh, precedent for, uh, in public interest litigation from India. Mm. Similarly, from England, we have the basic concepts coming, but organically, even here, we have developed. It, it has developed over the years. The, the jurisdiction. Right now, just touch upon probably my next question: public interest litigation. Uh, it is a growing area, I think, in Sri Lanka as well as in other countries, but probably not as much as in other countries. What exactly is public interest litigation? Uh, in usually in any court, as yes. you know, you need to have standing, local yes. standing. Yes. There has to be some. You would, have, you would be aggrieved or you have some, some grievance to go yes. before court. Yes. Just a citizen on the road can't say, well, there is this happening, I want to inter invoke the jurisdiction of court. Mm -hmm. Now, public interest litigation is a concept which actually was which, which, which developed where, uh, more so in the Indian courts, where the courts permitted citizens to come on behalf of the public interest. Mm. And, and to that extent, if, if a citizen was able to come before uh, the court and say, well, there is this, this issue, there is this, this serious issue which is affecting the public, I am, I am not directly affected, but as a group we are affected. Mm. Then the courts actually dispense with the requirement of having particular standing, mm. and they permitted the citizens to come forward. Mm. And actually, it, it was very, very progressive because mm. it, it, may, it, 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 it allowed actually Sometimes the citizen who is directly affected by certain action may not have the resources to uh, invoke the jurisdiction of court or come before court. Maybe they don't have the time, maybe they don't have the resources, or they may not have the expertise. But that made way for actually uh, groups of, 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 of citizens, uh, called these NGOs, various public interest groups, to form together, come together, and then fight for these public rights. And, and, and it, has been very, it, it, it has been very progressive. Mm. But having said that, as much as there is a positive, there is always a negative side also. Yeah. So sometimes we have seen over the years, I mean, many jurisdictions where public interest litigation also sometimes is, is could be abused. Could be abused. For, for various other reasons, people will come and say, well, public interest. But the, if you really go drill down, the motive might be something political or something, yeah. uh, some private interest coming up. Yeah. So, of course, the courts have discussion, and the courts, will, courts upon application in public interest, courts can determine whether actually there is, there is this is a public interest application. Okay. Could you give me two interest. examples of that, if you know, from any place in the world, about the genuine public interest uh, which, was, which came up and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, where it was attempted to be abused? Uh, well, we have had several cases in public interest litigation which have actually uh, really trans helped that translated yeah. into you know, take the water's edge case right you know, the, this group of citizens came mm -hmm. before court and, and after so many years and they, they took up the position that the whole transaction was flawed mm -hmm. and the court finally upheld mm -hmm. those arguments mm -hmm. then Sri Lanka insurance mm -hmm. um, Lanka marine services so those are cases where actually then I, I think various from wildlife the bill but when the various uh, cases which have been filed and they've mm -hmm. actually resulted in some positive uh, determinations by court. Mm. But of course, we uh, offhand, I, I've come across cases where I, mean, I have been appeared for respondents where I have taken that objection. Mm. In the well, there, is, there, is, there are vermins in the petitions in public interest, but this is certainly not public interest. Mm. This is, this is uh, to do with uh, private interest. Mm. And, and so you can show, show it on their own documentation. Uh, so those, those cases sometimes don't, don't get off the ground mm. because of that. 
but but then basically uh, offend uh, nothing really and it's not fair to also uh, mention uh, cases internationally know. have you seen um, where it has been really successful as well in as india there were various i mean pollution cases pollution you cases. know so this trans uh, border pollution i mean things like that mm. um in india it's very very been made use of a lot mm. by by those by the supreme court lawyers mm. based in new delhi is there any changes you think that should be done in our legislature to strengthen the public interest litigation or is the mechanism it, this is enough? a mechanism of court which yeah. which actually I, i would think the discussion must be kept to court kept to court because yeah. you can't really for formulate Define. formulate guidelines right for for uh, area which evolves with yes. time this is yes. something which has to evolve it may be there are maybe times where the courts must be conservative mm. um because um otherwise if you if you set out a set of rules then you will have we as lawyers will look at the rules and try to you know find ways of you know so that that, that may not be the spirit in which uh, one must look at public interest litigation right um uh, the other one of the areas that uh, people always complain probably to you to me and most of the lawyers and any any forum is that mm -hmm. loss delays now loss delays has, has become like a commercial term right <laughs> but the grievance is there loss delays means the cases are getting delayed in coming out what do you see in sri lanka for the reasons for the loss delays in, in in the areas you practice as well as in general in other other areas of law um uh, yes no loss delays is something it's it's now become a term of art <laughs> yeah i mean for lawyers for politicians yes. for anyone who writes an article about yeah. the legal system yeah um uh, first from from the point of view of the area i practice in which is public law mm. in from the civil civil side uh i i wouldn't say that it's 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 too bad mm. uh because um now the now the rate application is in the court of appeal which is the, the second most uh, superior court in the country yes. there's only one appeal and it finishes very fast fundamental fundamental rights is before the supreme court itself yes now one reason for laws delays is that it you start with the district court you take 10 years another for 3 4 years in the high court mm. and the supreme court you know at at the number of years mm. it, it 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 it's a very long period of time so uh, but having said that even in the public law area now several years uh, years ago in the writ court i just take an example yes. we had we had about um, maybe 4 or 5 years ago we had about 2000 cases filed mm -hmm. in a given year mm. 2000 new applications and that is very simple to verify you look at the case number yes and by about december you're hitting 2100 2001 that is not the case today yes numbers have reduced uh, substantially um so you and you have two courts mm -hmm. looking at writ applications so so physically and you have probably about 200 days in the year yeah so if you have 2000 cases two courts and just 200 days uh, on on basic simple arithmetic mm -hmm. it is it is not mm. difficult to mm. it, it it is not it is not practical mm. to 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 conclude yes so so but but having said that i think the judges have done a brilliant job in trying to yeah. manage the resources yeah. and um uh have have actually managed to not not make it get, get it out of hand mm. but now from from a broader perspective uh, uh actually i was on a delegation i was member of delegation of the bar association mm. about uh, that is in 2000 if i'm not mistaken 16 or mm. i think last year where we uh, went to singapore and malaysia mm. to study the system and 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 to 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 come out with uh, or figure out how how they resolve this matter yes uh, something which I, i as a member of the delegation i which i which i realized which all of us realized was that this problem we have today is not singular to us mm. this is a problem which even singapore malaysia which they faced 15 20 years ago the difference is that they manage they have now to some extent resolved it mm. especially in singapore i think there are some issues in malaysia mm. where there is i think the, the the mechanisms they have put in place may not be uh, as as uh, as uh, may not have reaped the results as 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 they 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 anticipated mm. but but from singapore's point of view they have um they have this system of case management right which is very important yeah that in fact they have they have a regular judge mm. say say take for example the level of a high court judge mm. who for a year or two is allocated the job of only managing the cases right so he doesn't sit in he de he doesn't hear cases yeah. his job during that year mm. 
or two would be to to basically do the job of the registrar yeah. in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And also there is the before the case, there is case management where you actually meet. Now, now for example, in Sri Lanka, we meet the opposing counsel in court. Yes. And we, we go yeah. at the bar table. But here you would meet your opposing counsel before. You would dis both, both parties would discuss so how long the case would take, how many how many hours you need, uh, what is the documentation, and and also fix the date the date of the case uh, mutually. Mm. So so and, and and you would have they would have a plan. Uh, the plan of or the time plan would be pre preset. Right. So which means that then uh, so then then when the court has to allocate other cases, they mm. know well it will take two hours or three hours on that. Uh, for this case, then the next case will be fixed thereafter. Mm. And also, once you fix the case, it's very difficult to postpone. Yes, you can't come and say you are not ready. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. Yeah. So, so basically, that that aspect of case management. Yeah. Now, there are the lawyers also get to know that yes. well, this is the time allocated, and they get to know it in advance, right? Yes, and and, and it's, so it's, the, it's mutually yeah. discussed. Mutually discussed. Where I need yeah. forty-five minutes. I need one hour. Yeah. I mean, you can't say I need two days. Yes. Mm. I mean, of course, depending on the matter. Yeah. So then, then there is, and there is the judge who will who will, who will basically it's more like arbitration. Yeah. They will discuss and have an agreement. Yeah. I need so much. You will need so much. These are the documents we will present, and these are the date on which we will take it up. Mm. So that way, there is also from the point of view the lawyers, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you would know. Sometimes mm. we start. I mean. The litigants might say, "Well, the lawyers are delaying cases." Mm. That that is not the case. Yes. We actually you know when we go for a matter, yeah. and the matter gets postponed. Yes. We have spent the whole day before evening before that studying that case. Exactly. And we have uh, burned the midnight oil. Yes. Go on to then you go through and then if the matter is not taken. Yeah. Up, but the blame directly comes from the client to the lawyer. That's the problem. Yes. So and, and then and the lawyer has to then again study the same case three months down the line. Exactly. And then with your other work, I mean, it's not something which 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 is at the top of your. I mean. Uh, mind so you have to, yeah. to go through the papers again. Yes. So actually, if, if actually if a matter and even from the point of view of the judges, mm. they will come prepared the night before yeah. or the day, a few days before. Yeah. And when the matter is not taken up, it's a, it's a waste of time. Yeah. And then time spent on on preparation. Yes. So so you you all did a study and you suggested yes. recommendations. So we have submitted a report mm. uh, to the bar association. Mm. Uh, this this delegation was led by the senior lawyer, Mr. Anand Vikramasekhar, right. President's right. Counsel from Go from the yes. Golba, member of it, and we, a very comprehensive proposal was submitted, mm. and uh, I think the bar association is looking into it, mm. and of course we have to have a common uh, effort from the judiciary, from the lawyers ourselves, and also from the from the state, to support some some kind of development. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, but if you if you look at present day, I know there are um, the provincial high courts, uh, provincial civil civil appellate courts came up, and that reduced a lot of work, and it, it was fast tracked in in that area of law. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, but still, people are complaining on that. Now, despite making these recommendations uh, to the necessary authorities, what is still making a, a case takes so long? Especially if we, if I may add to this. If you look at the immediate regions, like if you look at uh, not so uh, in Colombo, at least if you look at the district court, there are several district courts, and there are other places in in the country where one particular district court or two has to handle all areas of things. Is it the lack of courthouses? Is it the lack of staff? Is it the lack of government funding? Or is it what do you see? Now the mechanism you have suggested, this is the way to go. I mean, you all have done detailed study, but still it is not happening to the expectations. Well, you can. I think there is some proposal. In, there is a proposal in the constitution to increase the number of judges and all that. Mm. Well, you can do that. Mm. But I think substantively we need to improve the the quality of the entire system, mm. the lawyers, the judges, the court staff. I mean, yeah. we must be more dri result driven, result right. oriented. Uh -huh. uh, Which so result driven? What, what, what no, do you mean? because now even I. Uh, even in all these spheres, I mean, it must be a merit-based system. I mean, you must have performance. There is, I mean, you must have performance evaluation. Mm. We, now, now, for example, uh, a judgment. If a judgment of the district court, I'm not trying to find fault with anyone, but if a judgment of the district court after 10 years, and if the judgment is overturned okay. twice over in the High Court and the court, uh, Supreme Court, mm. I mean, obviously that that should not happen. I mean, we should have situations where now the whole problem is now the Supreme Court sometimes. If, a lot of applications come up in appeal, a lot of matters. Yeah. But ideally, we should have a situation where the district court or at least the high court, at the high court level, mm. the matter ends. The mm. parties must accept that judgment. Mm. 
and then if that happens, the number of cases will reduce. Mm. So, so we need to have. Um, um, but what can you do if the if your client mm -hmm. still says no? I am not accepting this judgment. I mean, isn't it beyond lawyers and judges? Well, um, how fair the judgment is? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, of the, court, the, the Supreme Court on the, in, in the appeal, the third yeah. appeal, uh, or second appeal, yeah. as it, it's not as of right. Mm -hmm. So they have the discussion of refusing, and that is what that is what takes place. Takes place. Uh, sometimes it's very clear judgment, but yeah. mm -hmm. and also I think the courts also must take the position that when these frivolous applications are filed, right. mm -hmm. the, you must you must order heavy costs. Mm -hmm. So so that should be a deterrent. Deterrent. If someone costs. is going before an appeal, yeah. you must have. At least a fifty percent chance, yes, of, or even a forty percent chance chance of success. Yeah. But with two percent of three percent of sec, uh, chance of uh, probability of success, you mm. should not be appealing. And in those appeals, you must have heavy costs, so that that so that litigants know well it's a, it would be a costly exercise. So, so what you're saying is this multiplicity and frivolous mm -hmm. relitigation or, or appeal uh, and litigation it adds is, to the delay. Certainly, because because that's the volume. Should, the court has to go through that process. Yes. So certainly, and we as lawyers, and as something, some a principle I follow, is if if the case is not good, I mean, I certainly don't take the brief. Yes. There, there should be some 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 possibility of of sustaining it, which is not fair by the litigant. It's not fair by the court. Right. So I think we as lawyers also have a responsibility in that in that way. Right. Uh, you know, we discuss a lot about uh, loss delays and public interest in public law. And one of the areas of uh, public law is the uh, writ jurisdiction or the prerogative writs. And I know we need, we will discuss it later. But uh, in this program, can you tell us in brief what is uh, the the writs in Sri Lanka and the prerogative writs and the remedies available? Can you give me a brief introduction? The prerogative remedy was the remedy available to the, the crown mm. in England to invoke the jurisdiction of court mm. to ensure that um, inferior tribunals mm. and public mm. officers, authorities, worked within the parameter mm. of their authority. Right. After about the 16th century, this, this, this right, or the, the, the remedy was, was made open to citizens yes. to invoke the jurisdiction of the, uh, the King's Bench yes. Division of Court okay. in the name of the Crown. Mm. So this is where this, 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 this the writ remedy actually uh, de derived, uh, derived the, the source of it. Mm. Uh, in Sri Lanka, it comes under Article 140 of mm. the Constitution, which specifically provides that um, the Court of Appeal shall have a jurisdiction to examine the records of mm. inferior tribunals and other th agencies mm. of uh, agencies of uh, state, and then call for their the, the record and then determine. Uh, whether, whether they are within the framework, they mm -hmm. can issue several types of writs, uh, writs of certiorari. Uh, then, you, of course, mandamus can compel public authorities to mm -hmm. perform their public uh, responsibilities. Uh, prohibition, co uh, uh, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, and also uh, with the provincial council, uh, the, the 13th amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, a part of it, the, the, the powers which comes within the provincial council list mm. was, um, uh, or, or it, there, there was provision made mm. to bring that, that, the, that area within the provincial high court. So if someone has, is aggrieved mm. by a matter coming within the provincial council list, mm. then the, the litigant can go before the provincial high court and, and seek, seek, seek uh, the writ remedy. Okay. And these remedies are taken against action of the state? Yes, uh, mostly it is a state, yeah. but the, the, um, there is this the Lord Atkins formula, which, which in the 1920s, which has mm. now developed. Um, it, is, it is action of those who, who um, control or, or have, who, who make decisions affecting the rights of citizens. Mm. And in, uh, who are in control control positions? Mm. So sometimes, if you, it may not be directly a state institution, mm. but you might have, like, say, a stock exchange mm. making a decision. There are judgments where the writ application has been invoked. Then you have private banks with parat execution rights. Yes, uh, the the court has court intervenes. Uh, so th there are instances, sports bodies, which have controlling power over over, over its uh, uh, the the. People it controls, right. then the court has invoked. So, so it's a little wider than the state also. Sometimes. Okay. Now this topic is a vast topic, writ jurisdiction, right. and we're going to 
discuss this in detail, Rajiv, in our next program. So you stay tuned for our next program where we're going to bring back Rajiv and we're going to discuss more detail deep into the subject of rich jurisdiction, prerogative writs and remedies available on that. But for law and order for today, that's it. Rajiv, thank you for joining us and for those valuable thoughts. And we'll uh, jo join you next week at the same time. In the meantime, you can go to our Facebook page. That's Facebook slash law and order channel I, Facebook slash law and order channel I and post your comments or queries and uh, we will take them into consideration. Enjoy the rest of the programming on channel I and have a good weekend.